So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at recreating this little cheer design that you see here um, using a fun technique I call a stone graft. Um, I've looked for different shortcuts uh, that I can do in Corel Draw here to create these types of designs, and I thought it would be a fun uh, exercise to share with you. So let's go ahead and uh, delete this design and show you how we created it here in CorelDRAW. So what I did was I come in here to uh, Google and I looked for uh, an image with, that was kind of uh, that I can use as a reference image of kind of what uh, the pose I was looking to create. And this was the pose I was looking to create. So I'm just going to click and drag it into CorelDRAW and kind of use it as a basis uh, for my reference image. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and trace my image in CorelDRAW and this is a very poor quality image so we'll choose that low quality image setting and we'll go ahead and click OK to accept the defaults and there is our traced bitmap. Now for our purpose we're not actually using this um, but I will show you why we wanted to trace it. Let's go into wireframe mode for a moment and you can see that what trace gave us was now, a fairly good representation given the very poor quality, but we have several bits and pieces. So we'll select those bits and pieces, and we have to ungroup them. And then we'll go ahead and weld that together, and now we have one piece. And that will work really well for us. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to enhance mode here. Let's give this a different color. And then we're going to resize this design to the same size as what we actually want it to be, which in my case, I want it to be six inches. Okay, so six inches overall height. Now for the uh, stone graft technique. I have a little macro here that helps me out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and import the stone graft. And then for this particular design, because I want to show some detail, the stone graft is imported by default as SS10 stones. Now what I did, is really not magical here. I literally took a stone and literally hand placed, hand placed, hand placed. Um, I spent a lot of time hand placing all these stones, um, but they're kind of random and uh, they're, you know, they're spaced differently and the end result I think looks really well. So anyhow, there is our stone graft. And then, so we're going to click on this button to resize those stones to be SS6 uh, stones instead. Okay. Now, from here, we're just going to kind of rotate this uh, graphic here to best cover the image as best we can. Whatever you think is going to cover the most of the image, we can kind of tweak things a little bit, and you can get it pretty darn close. Um, that actually covers up most of the image, so that's pretty good. So then what we're going to do, because we imported the stone graft, uh, we need to ungroup it. So we'll right-click and ungroup. And then just come in here and grab our cheer gal. Okay? And then as part of the process, while well, I create another macro that allows us to select an object like our cheer gal, and then anything to the outside, it will, uh, if I click this button, select by outline, it'll go ahead and convert all those objects. And then I can just come in here and hit the delete key and get rid of all those objects to the outside. So it just makes that whole process a lot easier. So just hit the delete key and there it goes. Alright, so now I have to come in and give this a little finesse. And this is just uh, the not so fun part. So like for the arms here, what we're going to do for the arms is we're going to delete a few of these excess stones and then just begin placing them. So uh, for the arm here, this is best going to be represented by two stones. So we just kind of come in here and all the way down the line, anything that kind of sits outside that arm that you don't think we're going to use, we just go ahead and delete and set these stones up, keeping in mind the spacing and you know, all the things that we have to keep in mind. And then when we get to a certain point, we can delete a few extra stones here as they begin to overlap on us. And if we want to, we can actually come into wireframe mode if that 
uh, simplifies the process for you. I don't know necessarily that it does. Sometimes I prefer to look at that because I can kind of see these overlaps a little bit better. But that's just really a personal preference. So we'll go ahead and delete a couple stones here. And this process is the tedious process. It does uh, take a little bit of time to position all these stones exactly where we would want them. But I don't know that there's really any other shortcut um, for, for this particular uh, type of design. It's just part of what we have to do. Now, like around the head shape here, what I typically will do, let's just come in here for our head shape, is all these that are on the line, or close to it, I'll just go ahead and delete these. So anything that is on the line, uh, or like I said, usually on the line or pretty close to it, I'll go ahead and delete. And now we can come in here. And what I usually start to do when I'm doing the stone graft technique is the first thing to do is kind of place these stones to define our border, our perimeter. That's usually where I began the process. So we'll go ahead and do that all the way around. We just borrow a stone here and there. And if we want to, we can actually lock that cheerleader by right clicking and choosing lock. And then we'll go ahead and position. And we can, you know, use a, use a little creative judgment there to what's going to be best to represent the hair as we come around. Let's go ahead and move this out. Move that back in. So this is it's kind of a fun part when you get all done to to see the the design done. It does look really well. All right, so then we can go ahead and delete a couple stones here. And we'll just move this stone out of the way. So we're just kind of coming around the corner here. And if we don't have a stone, we can just pick it up, right click, and duplicate a stone like that. Easy enough to do, right? We'll go ahead and position this stone here. Okay, so that pretty well takes care of the head. And then it's just a matter of coming in here and filling in all those gaps uh, that we created as best we can. And we want to try and keep it as random as we can just to kind of keep with the flow. And this does take a little bit of practice and know how, you know, how to, how to manipulate things and get them to to fit in the little space that we have and still look good. Um, and every time we do this, it's just a little bit different example. We can kind of fill in that area. But once you actually get this stoned out, what looks like a huge gap um, really isn't a huge gap. Once we actually get, get a template made, um, it actually looks really good. So we just kind of go through that whole process all the way through here, just kind of maneuvering these stones around. It doesn't take that long to kind of fill in all these gaps. And I'm just picking a stone, right clicking and dropping it. So I'm not, you know, being really, really careful. A couple more stones here and we'll have it. Okay, so we can push that one out a little bit, create a little space. Push that one out a little bit, create a little space. All right, so that takes care of the basic head shape. Now we have to move on to this other arm here. <clears throat> so at the very base here, we're, we're doing three stones at the base. And then we'll probably go ahead and do three stones again. And then maybe we'll bring it back down to two here. And we'll use two stones the rest of the way. 
to represent the arm. We have a lot of extra stones there, so we can just get rid of them. Just pull all these into place here. And just keep going here. We've got this one to put in there. Right click a drive. We've got that one. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Then, like, all of this right here, we don't even have to touch that. Just like this one over here, we don't even have to touch that because we want that to be nice and random for the pom-poms. And then all we have to do is kind of come in here and finesse these stones uh, for the body shape. So let's go ahead and do that. And just like before, I just I just start by positioning stones um, along the body line first to define the outside edge of the body line. And then we're going to get rid of all these extras here. So just redo reposition these to define the body. And right now we're going to be pretty true to the original design. But you'll see when we get all done, we'll come back in and modif modify things fairly heavily to get the exact look for this design that we're looking to get. So we'll come in here. So all the way around the image, we're just going to define this outside perimeter. This is like the most boring part, but it is necessary and you get to see it uh, in action. And the thing of it is, is um, there's probably simpler ways to do this. The only thing is, is this way, when you're hand placing your stones, like we're doing here, we're, we're going to get the exact result that we're looking to get. Um, I've never really seen any type of demonstration by any type of automated software where you could get a similar look um, and have the design really turn out nice like, like this one's going to um, using some type of automation. Um, so you just have to do uh, what works for you. And the thing of it is, is once we do this design one time, uh, we, you know, we could use this dozens of times. So that's nice. Um, once we get this locked in one time, we can just keep using it over and over again. Because a cheer design is one of those universal designs, you know, that you'll, you'll probably use quite a bit. I would guess. So we could we could afford to spend a little extra time on this one. And I've used this stone grafting technique um, for lots of lots of different things. And it's just better than, uh, you know, hand placing every single stone. That would take a while to do every single one. And you can see what I'm doing here is really uh, not complicated at all. It's just placing the stone along the line. Any stone that's close, you know, too close for the margin that I like to keep between stones, I just delete it. And we'll fill in that space. We'll have to nudge a stone here and there um, to make room, but that's okay. So now we're back up to the arm. So we have all of that uh, done now. So then all I have to do is come in here and start shifting. So we're just kind of do a little shape shift in here and figure out what what's going to be best to do a little shape shift. And we don't want to resize the stone now, but just nudging these stones um, enough to fill in these little gaps. I just have to move things around here to so everything fits like it's supposed to. This one here, we can move that one. There we go. And you can kind of position things and nudge things around till you get just the look that you're looking to get. And then once we're all done kind of modifying this and moving things about, then we'll actually be able to get in here and see what the finished design looks like. 
because it's kind of hard to tell when you're zoomed in this tight but it'll be it'll be a fun little project for us so we're just kind of nudging these stones around no real rhyme or reason to it just wherever they fit we'll have to stick them in there now these stones down here we don't shouldn't have to move a lot so let's just focus on leaving that line of stones there adding a stone and adding a stone and adding a stone and it would be nice to add one more stone there but that means we gotta shift shift some things around there we go okay so so now we just shifted that around a little bit move that stone over and this one over Move this one over, move this one up, duplicate this one. So we can nudge that one a little bit, fill in that gap. Let's fill in the gap of the toes here as best we can. There we go. We'll leave that one there and duplicate that one. Duplicate that one. Duplicate that one. We're just clicking and dragging and then right clicking. So left click, drag, and then right click. And that will make a duplicate stone for us. Now these here that are really close to the outline, we can just shift those a little bit. And I think we can maybe fit in a stone or two here or there. This is going to get some fine tuning when we're all done uh, with this uh, basic setup here so we don't have to be super particular because some of this we may not even wind up uh, using. So we won't be too too critical on ourselves right now. So we're almost done here. Okay. All right, maybe we can shift these around enough to make room. Okay. So I think that's pretty well done now. Perfect. So what we can do is now I think we can go ahead and delete our outline of our cheer gal. Or at the very least, let's maybe not delete it, but let's definitely move it out of our way. So let's right click on that and let's unlock it. And then we can move it out of the way. So now you can see what we have left. So let's go into enhance mode. And now you can really see what our design looks like. And hey, that doesn't actually look too bad, does it? So th then the next thing I might do is I might just come in here and select a few uh, stones up there and let's give it a color. And then we selected a few extra stones. So let's go back in and select those. Put those back to black. And then go ahead and select these and do the same thing. And then we grabbed a couple stones that we didn't mean to. So let's go ahead and change those to black. You see that there. And then this is where you can kind of just step back, look at your design, and say, hey, you know what? I want to I want to add, you know, maybe to the pom-pom here. We're going to add a couple of stones because you like that filled out a little bit more. There's a little bit of a weird little dent here. So maybe you want to add a couple of stones to make that a little bit more rounded. Um, so maybe that looks good. And then down here, there's a little bit of space right here. So maybe we'll just nudge that over a little bit and change that up a little bit. And, you know, something that might be fun that I never actually tried um, before, but I'm going to try now because I think I, I see this pattern <laughs> emerging, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and do it because I don't have one like this. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to take this stone, 
and this stone and this stone and change it to pink. Okay, now watch this kind of come together here. Uh, what we're going to do then, we're going to take, uh, we're going to maybe shuffle some things. Let's do this uh, on this side. So let's take these three stones and change those to pink. Okay, and then let's take, um, let's see here, how can we do this? Let's go ahead and delete that stone. Let's nudge that stone up. Let's move this stone down. Bring this stone over. And we can just kind of finesse those stones a little bit. There we go. So let's go ahead and take all of these stones and change those to pink as well. Now what I want to do here, up in the neck area here, I want to do something different here. So let's come in here and what we're going to do is we're going to create a V shape and we're going to have to maybe add a stone in there. So what we're going to do here is see if this will look good for us. So now we've kind of created a little V right here. Let's see what this looks like. So let's take anything but that V and let's change those to be pink. Oops, wrong color, pink. All right, so there we go. So now I could take all of these and change them to pink. So let's go ahead and do that. Pink and pink and pink. So there, she's got like a little, little shirt on. And if we really wanted to get kind of fun and fancy, what if we were to do a band of maybe two crystal? So we'll do pink and we'll do, um, maybe what we'll do is because the whole, actually the cheerleader is going to be crystal. So maybe what we'll do is we'll do like a pink and a darker pink. Um, and then of course you've got the, the little skirt design. Now what I did was <clears throat> is I wanted mine to be a little bit different from the original. So what I did was is I came in here, deleted a few like this, and I created that little bit of extra uh, gap in there so to speak and then this you, this you just kind of have to use your own imagination of exactly how you want that to look um, but I I made some I know I made some uh, some adjustments um, and like maybe we'll add one there we'll come in here and add one and add one so you can kind of change up uh, what you have here a little bit to get to get the look that you're looking for um, and what we'll do here I think I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in this little area here you now you could do kinda whatever you want to do but I think that looks pretty good um, and then if we wanted to, we could even come in here and give that skirt a different color. Then maybe, maybe let's try that. Let's go ahead and take all of these stones here. Let's come in here and select a whole swath. And let's go ahead and change those to pink. Also, and that will help define uh, that skirt uh, area. Change those to pink. There we go. And we have a really cute little cheer design. And I think that looks that looks pretty decent. You know, we can fine tune and maybe stagger these stones a little bit more. Um, I don't know if we could get an extra stone in that little space or not. But you know, maybe if we nudge that a little bit and we can fit a fit an extra stone in there maybe we could bring this in a little bit there we go so the so nice little cute little cheer design 
um, that's ready to be cut now. And uh, you, know, you can come in here, like there's a little, little bit of space there, and you can fine tune it, but I think it's a, a cute little design example of how you can use that stone graft technique um, very, very effectively. Thanks for watching.